I, I grew up in a culture where God was totally the center of my life. I'm pastoring in a culture where we want to tuck God into a certain point in our life. Find a convenient place for him to fit. You know what? My grandson spent the night with us several years ago when he was a little bitty fellow. And in a king-size bed, no matter how you turn, he could have an elbow in a rib, a heel in your stomach. Ain't no way to fit comfortably in that bed with him. And there is no way that your carnal self is going to relax and be comfortable when the baptism of the Holy Ghost begins to work <laughs> on the inside of you. Amen. Don't get troubled by feelings of inadequacy. Feelings of inadequacy are pretty sure a sign you're doing the will of God because it's bigger than you. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because your self-evaluation is I am rich, increased with goods. We got more money coming in than we've ever had before, and we don't need anything. But don't you know that you're really wretched, miserable, poor, blind, exposed? The problem this church has is she doesn't see herself as she really is. I'm at a low point right now, but I really pray me and God can resurrect it. Self-deception de self is easy to accomplish. The problem with being ignorant is that someone who is ignorant is too ignorant to know they're ignorant. And when I say that, I have to stop and say, God, am I so ignorant that I really don't know I'm ignorant? I'm not using the word ignorance as a slander because we're all ignorant about something. But a lukewarm church who cannot see herself is in a dangerous place. This is the culture that is pounding on the door of the end time church. Post-pandemic culture has created a whole new challenge for pastors. Putting their church on the same device that they get their entertainment. Flick over for the sermon and then flick over and see how the movie's ending. Indeed, can a tree produce both good and evil fruit? Instead of God-centered lives, people looking for a place to fit God into their life. Loyalty is a dying concept. It is a challenge to get people to commit to the local church. And the local church is where revival is really happening. I am glad that you're here. And this is a good turnout on the first night of camp meeting. But I'll tell you where the people are being baptized. They're being baptized at the road, at Sarah Land, at Prattville. They're being baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost in local church altars. We are here to build the power of the local church you're the God outlet in this city this is where he gets out and you are that voice you are where the church meets the world and then add as of 2021 The people that you pastor see 10,000 ads a day. From the time you dismissed service last Sunday until the time they walk back in next Sunday, 70,000 pictures, images. Ever 6.8 seconds. But then you think they do sleep about eight hours a night. So when you do the math, while they are awake every 5.7 seconds, this is the way you need to be looking. This is how you need to be thinking. 
this is what you need to accept. This is what you can't get along without of. If you want to be in the, and we've got a cancel culture now where you don't buy into the accepted narrative, uh, then you are a non-person, persona non grata. And, and all of a sudden, uh, you're not a person because you're not accepted the accepted narrative of this age and generation. That's what they hear week after week, day after day, every 5.7 seconds. And that really does make you a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. I made a pledge four years ago that I would not step in the pulpit without one hour of prayer because I got nothing to give them but God. In a situation like this where we're trying to put on a count meeting, I say, God, I hope I got some equity built up. When I do my best to change gears and flip a switch when I get up here, because this is important to me. You are important to me. You are very, very important to me. And I know there's a battle. Oh, you throw up your hands. Laodicea, this is Laodicea, brother. I refer back to my opening statement. There is never a situation, place, or time when God cannot give revival. So I go back to Laodicea and I read verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, wickedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. I'm telling you, he told us about Laodicea, and then he told us how to have revival in Laodicea. Three challenges are issued to this generation. Buy gold tried in the fire. Put on white raiment. Anoint your eyes with eye sand. The answer is still in the faith. So let me interpret that to you. Pure gold is pure truth. He said, if you're going to break the spirit of Laodicea, you're not going to do it with a watered-down doctrine. Pure gold. Pure truth. This generation needs pure truth more than any generation in history. But I will say it again. I was riding with a new convert. He's one of those that asks a question every, every 10 seconds. And I was going somewhere and he said, I want to go with you. And he looked at me and he said, will there ever come a day with all these Bible translations when people won't know what the truth is? And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, his truth endureth to all generations. God has made a promise that his truth endureth to all generations. I got a major attack of arthritis last year. Never had it before. It ain't no fun. But the last time I checked, God's not a bit sick. He's not a bit slowed down. So you young preacher, if I get to a place where I can't move, and you come see me, and you see this little finger going, I'm telling you, you can have revival right now. But you're going to have to preach the doctrine the way it is and preach it with power and anointing and authority. But that's not all. There's three parts of this. White Raymond. Holiness. There's power in holiness. Because holiness represents God's justice in balance with righteousness. Holiness is when we become righteous 
And so his justice is in balance. There is a power in that balance. Amen. Uh, I'll tell you what he said about the fruit of the, uh, fruit of the Spirit. No man can bring a charge against you and make it stick. Because there's power in balance. There's power when your life lines up with what you're talking about and what you're saying. There's power in your testimony. Amen. Because the reproduction seed, guess where it is? It's inside the fruit. And so the reproduction of the church is inside of the fruit of the spirit. And if we ever say that's not important and holiness is not important, you're not going to be able to break the spirit of Laodicea in these last days unless you have white garments. But there's one more. And this is what I want to challenge you ministers. Anoint your eyes. Vision. Vision. Oh, this COVID has made it tough. Vision. <laughs> We're dealing with a totally different culture. Vision. 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 He promised no matter what generation it was, there's a way to reach them because he said it's going to endure. So vision, vision. Pray until I see an answer. Pray until I see a path. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what, I've pastored for 38 years and there's something driving me right now that I'm miserable. I'm miserable. I can't stand empty altars. I can't stand empty baptistries. I can't stand it when our people are not bringing people into the house of God and showing this world needs deliverance now more than it's ever needed. And we're the only people on the face of the earth that's got the tool in our hands to set them free. I'm telling you the faith is not just what we preach, but the faith is that we preach. It is not just what we believe, but it's that we believe. We don't just believe the gospel. We believe in the power of the gospel. Let's stand and give glory to God. <laughs> so when Paul said, I have fought the fight, I finished the course, I've kept the faith. Brother Mark Maddox, that means when you pray people through and they don't stick, you go back to that altar until you walk up that pulpit again with vision. Amen. Until I can walk up and preach faith when I don't feel a lick of faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because it's not how I feel. It's what God can do. It's what God can do. It's what God can do. Hallelujah. Had a little deaf girl, the doctor told, told her father she's deaf, that we need to put her tender to a specialist. He said, I am, we're having a revival tonight, and I was preaching that revival. He brought that little girl up. Me and the pastor laid hands on that little girl, and I'm going to be honest with you, I did not feel one little smidgen of the spirit. And I turned around and said, well... I didn't, the group said, I didn't, I didn't feel nothing. Went back to the doctor the next day, perfect hearing. God didn't say, when I'm going to do something, I'll give you electrical shots and let you know I did it. Amen. <laughs> he just did it. Amen. So when Paul came to the end of his journey and he said, I have kept the faith. He wasn't just talking about the message that he preached. He was talking about, you know, if the Lord gives me five more days, I think I'm going to go win somebody. Because I still believe this thing works. It works. It works. It works, Brother Huggins. It works. <laughs> Amen. Let's lift our hands and love the Lord one more time. Thank you, Jesus, for your beautiful grace your spirit. Thank you for these wonderful ministers of the gospel in this house tonight. God, let there be a renewal of 
faith and trust in what you can do with your truth. Lord, let us go out one more time, share it with one more person, and watch you work. Watch you change a life. Watch you change a family that's about divorced, ready to split up. Put a fresh love in their heart. You feel stuck, get you a Bible study chart and go sit down at somebody's table. I promise you it will change you as much as it changes them. Hallelujah. Pardon me for the reference, but a young man messed up on drugs and spent a little time in jail. Ran into a pretty Pentecostal girl at church. And she shows up for church. Two years on a Saturday. Two years. Hungers. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. He got baptized in Jesus' name. He got the girl, too. He's your Alabama District Youth President, Brother Adam Maddox. That's what the gospel can do. He just won testimony of many in this house. Hope I didn't share too much, bro. I'm getting old and kind of say stuff, you know. It'll work. You may be seated. We're going to go into the ordination portion of this service. Thank you for lending an ear to me tonight and let me share what God has given us. In the United Pentecostal Church International, there are three levels of licensing. The entry level is called local license, where the minister works in the local church alongside his pastor. The next level is general license, given when the ministry begins to expand from the home base. Third and highest level of licensing is in the UPCI's ordination. It's the one reflected in the scriptures, transferred by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Yet ordination is much more than licensing. The night of my ordination still stands as O.R. Foss looked at me and scared the devil out of me on that platform. If there was a devil in it, he left. Something of a deep spiritual nature is going to transpire tonight. Something supernatural will transpire tonight. Because we're doing it the way the Bible said to do it. This will launch each of these ministries into a higher dimension of ministry and anointing, and each of them has already achieved much in ministry. Yet, this will go higher and deeper. And I want to take this a step further. Ordination is not something that happens in a boardroom. We approve you for ordination in a boardroom, but ordination happens here tonight. Even my UPCI manual said it must be done in a public ceremony. And we're so glad that you have agreed to that. Tonight is the night of your ordination. You've achieved this level of ministry by personal application and perseverance. There have been many mentors along the way, and we have already introduced the mentors that will be a part of this ceremony. We are so honored that you invested in the lives of these ministers and it is only right that you were a part of this <laughs> so brother and sister Basenio, brother and sister Bird, brother and sister Palmer the scripture recognizes the right of ordination Titus 1 5 records the words of Paul for this cause left by thee in Crete that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordained elders in every city as I appointed you. Elders to be ordained in every city. The Bible records the method of transference. 1 Timothy 4.14 Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy and the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Amplified Bible reads it this way. Do not neglect the gift which is in you that special inward endowment which was directly imparted to you by the Holy Spirit 
by prophetic utterance when the elders laid their hands upon you at your ordination. So in a moment, we're going to have that prayer. A minister is a warrior. A warrior is a servant. He is a warrior servant. 2 Timothy 2, 24, 26, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patience. In meekness, instructing those that impose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Yep. You're going to pastor people who are at that point where Satan can take them captive at his will, but you can break that. You may be receiving the highest honor that we can give you, but you will never rise above the role of a servant. You're constantly being, being gentle with people, teaching them with patience, meekly instructing those who oppose themselves that they may recover out of the snare of the devil and rescuing people who are taken at Satan's will. Never lose the heart of the servant. We serve people, but our primary service is to God. It's imperative that there is an elder in the life of every minister. Hear me. It is imperative that there's an elder in the life of every minister. And so I would like the elders that are here with these ministers to come at this time. And they're going to bring the ordination towel. And we as a congregation are going to respectfully give them a moment to share personal words to our ordination candidates and present to them the towel of servanthood. So please, we can all do it together at this time. Speak words of encouragement. Thank you, and if you elders would stand behind them at this time. First Tiny, ti or fi rather Titus 1, 5 through 9, for this cause I left thee in Crete, that thou should have set in order the things that are wanting and ordained elders in every city as I had appointed thee. If any man be blameless, husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of right or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayer. If the district board and our guest ministers would come and stand behind these ordination candidates with the elders that are here.
2 Timothy 4, 1. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Amen. We are now going to pray the prayer of ordination. I invite this congregation to stand and extend a hand toward these ministers and their spouses, district board and other ministers. I want you to gather around front and behind here and let's anoint and pray for as the ministry of ordination rests and settles upon Brother Basenio, Brother Bird, and Brother Palmer. Let us pray. Let the Spirit of the Lord rest here. Amen. Let's praise and worship our God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Will stand with me at this point. Reverend Jamie Bassinio, Brother C.J. Bird, Brother Cliff Palmer, you are now ordained ministers with the United Pentecostal Church International. But more important, ordained ministers in the kingdom of God. We congratulate you. And we are so proud to be on the same team. Thank you. I would like for these three couples to come and stand in front of this pulpit facing this congregation, if you will.
and our board is going to file down and we're going to greet these and any of you ministers out there that come and want to greet these families please do so I want to remind you that even if it is raining there will be food trucks at the sanctuary in Bessemer and we'll put that slide back up as we close the service I encourage you to go over there and have some fellowship with other Christians you know all that we have been through recently I look across this is a very beautiful crowd on the first night of camp meeting a lot of obstacles have been overcome and I thank you for coming it's going to be a great week remember seminars start at nine o'clock in the morning and I promise you they'll be worth your time upstairs amen so if our board would come down please and we want you to come by first and greet these ministers yes then following the board uh, we encourage all that that will to come forward and this is a very special night and a night to remember god bless you our service will conclude as you come through here thank you we'll see you in the morning god bless you